Alhamdulillah <laughs> Masyarakat Muhammad dan Abduhu wa Rasulu Sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Ya ayuhaladina wa litaqullah haqqa tukotihi Wa latamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayuhaladina wa litaqullah wa kulu qawlan sadida Yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum Wa ma yuti'i ilaha wa rasulahu Faqad faza fawzan azima Praise be to Allah with kisam and with forgiveness We seek Asaf and his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil on souls and all bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of, worthy of worship except Allah. He is one, he has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and mass messenger. Will you believe fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except in a state of Islam? Will you believe keep a duty to Allah and fear him and speak all is the truth? He alone will die for your righteous deeds and will forgive your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved a great achievement. In Surah Qaf, which is the 50th chapter of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us around verse 16 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Wa laqad khalaqna al-insana wa na'lamu ma tuwaswisu bihi nafsuhu. Wa nahnu aqrabu ilahi min hablil qarid. Now verily, it is we, and Allah is speaking of himself here, it is we who have created man, and we know what his innermost self whispers to him. For we are closer to him than his jaglavi. And then Allah goes on to say, إِذْ يَتَلَقَى الْمُتَلَقِيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَائِدِ And so, whenever the two demands of his nature, or the two parts of his nature, come face to face, contending from the right and from the left, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَطِيدٌ not even a word can he utter, but there is a watcher over him, ever present, ever recording. On the authority of Bilal ibn al-Harith, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Indeed a man says a word from that which pleases Allah, and he never thinks anything of it. So indeed a man says a word, and it pleases Allah, and he never thinks anything of it, meaning the man who said the word. But Allah will record it for him from his pleasure, and it will be due to it until the day of judgment. And indeed a man will say something from which it angers Allah, and the man never thinks of it after he has said it, but Allah will record it from him, for him and his anger due to it until the day of judgment. So basically what this narration here is saying is that sometimes we say things and it pleases Allah and we don't even realize how much it pleases Allah. But Allah records it and he writes the good for it and, that's, and that pleasure of Allah and the good for it stays with us until the day of judgment. And sometimes we say something that angers Allah and we never think anything of it and the anger that Allah, fe that Allah feels because of it and the bad thing that we did is recorded against us and it stays with us and it's waiting for us there on the day of judgment. So brothers and sisters, this thing about the things that we say and we do will form the basis of the khutbah today, inshallah. But before we get there, alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, we are here today for another Friday. For whatever reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us to be here on this day. It is not like any one of us deserved to be here. But it's a fact that all of us needed to be here. We don't deserve it, but we need it. Because it is in being here, it is in being part of this collective, it is being part of this, of fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are going to get the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided to give us this opportunity to be here, to seek his forgiveness, and to worship him as he deserves to be worshipped. We pray for the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray that his light shines in our hearts, that our hearts are nourished. And we pray that we continue to honor the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of his family, and of those who follow close in his path. Ameen, ameen, ameen. We pray that we increase in our love for Al-Burhan, the proof, Al-Mustafa, the chosen one. We pray that our hearts soften towards the memory of our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just a general reminder for us, brothers and sisters, to continue to make dua throughout this day, because on this day, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the dua at whatever point in time he chooses to accept it. May he accept that dua that we, we make towards him sincerely. And may that dua be the thing that allows us entry into al Jannah. Amin, amin, amin. I always start off my khutbah the same, right? Reminding us that life is cyclical. Right? From Allah we come unto Him is our return. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. Right? We come from Allah and we return to Him. And that's the one thing that we are certain of. That there will come a time when we have to meet our Lord. And this is what dictates a lot of how we live our lives. This fact that we have to stand before Allah on the day of judgment. And we are consistently fighting against ourselves.
which is actually the crux of this ayah that I, I narrated earlier on. That there's this, these two parts of us will come face to face with each other throughout our lives. And on the day of judgment, the ultimate coming together of these two parts of our nature is when our deeds are presented to us. When we see our good deeds and our bad deeds face to face. But we live through this throughout our entire lives, right? We are living with this good and bad of us throughout our lives. So brothers and sisters, in this khutbah, I want our reminder to be that this deen is a deen of balance. And that when we speak of balance, in Islam, we are really speaking of justice. Our faith is a way of life that is predicated, that is based on justice, that is managed by al-adl, or the most just, the implement of justice. It is for this reason that I refer to the verses from Surah Qaf above. They speak of the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it impacts our lives here on earth. The topic today specifically is around social media and the etiquette of using it. So I have two points to make today. I have two main points that I'm going to make today. And these are the essential general points of what I'll talk about. One, social media is a tool. So treat it as a tool. It is a tool, treat it as a tool. And this point is really for those of us who might be more seasoned, right? The ones who may not be using it as often. It is a tool, so treat it as a tool. So for us who may not use it as often, or for those of us who may not use it as often, let us not complain about the tool, but instead find ways to help those who use the tool use it to their best advantage. And the second point I want to make is that for those of us who use it, that social media is merely an extension of our faith. Social media is just merely another manifestation of our faith. And what we portray on social media is who we portray ourselves to be. So before I move on, I want to, it's interesting, huh? this topic, these topics were generated at the start of the year because we generate our topics early on and go with the season of things. But it's interesting that this topic is a topic for today because I would be remiss if I didn't call to mind a former student of Kuba Institute. And I'll mention him by name, my old brother Adam Solgora. He died last week. But the thing about him, he was 15 years old. The thing about him, he was a prolific YouTuber. Right? He was on social media in a real way. He had a following of about 40,000 people or so. And this here is the power and presence of this, right? That imagine the blessings that come with this idea of people are so touched by what you do that they have nothing but good things to say about you. Imagine that you are spreading a message or you are saying things or doing things that bring a certain amount of ease or happiness to people's lives. And we can interpret this however we want to interpret it. But what I want to say is that, is that we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his good, forgives any wrong that he may have committed, that he allows the Prophet sallam, to intercede for him on the Day of Judgment. We pray that his parents know that they have a community that supports them, and that his siblings know that we are here for them in whatever way we can be here for them. We pray that as a community, that we learn to be compassionate and embracing, and that people know us for our warmth and our kindness, as opposed to our judgmental behavior and all of the other things that come with that. And we should say amen to that. 
So social media, brothers and sisters, is a tool. I have sat through many lectures, conversations, and sermons where individuals come up and the first thing we hear is that social media is evil. And as someone, I didn't grow, I, didn't, I wasn't born into the world of social media. I'm not a digital native like some of the kids here who were born into a space where social media was already present. But it became prevalent more in my teenage years, right? My teenage years when I started using it myself. And that's me, right? So I, didn't bo I wasn't born into it, but I started using it as a teenager in my late teens. When you had IRC and the little yellow A-man, right? The AOL A-man who used to be running across, right? That. So this is going way back in the early days of social media. And when I hear individuals come up and they say social media is evil and they start talking negatively about all the different types of social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, right? Twitter, whatever it is. I immediately, I shut down and I block off. I lock them off. Because for me, if you are looking at the whole tool and saying it's evil and it's bad, then that is a point of ignorance. It is a point of ignorance. So if I, who know and understand and can mediate it, shuts you down the minute you start with that, imagine those who were born into it and are using it every single day. They use social media as part of their learning. So imagine us standing up there and saying that this thing is evil and this thing needs to be out of our lives. We are talking about something or we are talking from a perspective that's outdated. And this is why many times when we speak, our words fall on deaf ears. Because the way we speak, it's outdated. It's not current. It's not meeting our community where our community needs to be met. So if we are those, or we are of those, who every time we speak of social media, we have something negative to say, then we need to stop. We're not doing the community any justice or any service. We're not helping. In fact, we are harming and pushing people away. So let's stop and figure out what is the better way to approach it. So instead of spreading this false narrative, we need to keep in mind that social media is just a thing. It is neither good nor bad. It is a tool like anything else. This is like me saying that email is evil or a telephone is evil. When we make these statements, that's exactly what it sounds like. And for all of us who use our, nobody will say the cell phone is evil. But that's what we mean when we say social media is evil. It's the same analogy. It is just a communication tool. So the question becomes, how do we manage it and negotiate it? And I know we can take it as an exaggeration. You know, when people say it's evil and stuff like that, I know in some cases they're just exaggerating. But it colors how we engage with those who use it a lot. We start looking at them differently. We start looking down on them as though they are not really doing this Islam thing right. And that's a problem. So imagine how someone who uses it heavily feels when they see someone in religious quote-unquote authority speak negatively about that. Imagine when that is the message that comes across. How they're looking at us as religious authority figures. Are we really speaking to them? Or are we speaking from our own bias and ignorance? And this is where we need to start checking ourselves. <clears throat> Instead, let us focus on what the issue really is. The issue is always going to be centered on the choices that we make. It's not about the tool, it's about the choices, plain and simple. And we continue to lose sight of that, and as we continue to lose sight of that, we continue to have messages that are ineffective. What's the grounding for this? Shaitan al regime he asked Allah to give him permission until 
the day of judgment. Give me a chance. Let me distract them. Let me lead them away. Let me do all of these things. Let me try my best. And he was given that. He was given that. But even on the day of judgment, what will Shaitan say? I had no power over you. I couldn't make you do anything. So social media doesn't make our kids or make us act any way. If Shaitan cannot make us do something bad, social media is not going to make us do something bad. And Shaitan was given the permission by Allah. He was given that freedom. The most that happens is that we get whispered to and then we make choices. We are consistently making choices. So banning access to media is not the answer to addressing the challenges that we are facing with those who are dealing with social media. It's not the answer. Curbing it could be part of the approach. However, the issue is just like anything else. Given the individuals who are dealing with it, we're empowering them with the ability to make the right choices. So I mentioned in the earlier surah, in the earlier verses, the blame Shaitan regime, if talak, if yatak, yatak, if yatalaka al mutalakiyan, and when the two demands of his nature. Right, so this here is speaking about these two things that come face to face. Commentators of the Quran say that this could mean that the two angels who are recording, right, that they are going to continue to record. So when the things that are supposed to be recorded will always get recorded, right? So it's telling us here on one hand that these two angels are going to record and anything that we do, it will get recorded. Another commentator of the Quran is reported to have said that what this also means is that our base nafs will meet or will continue to bounce up against our reasoning and our akal. So these desires that we have that draw us to these base things. So you see something online and it draws you towards it and you click on it and you watch it or you see something that you want to say and share or you have Facebook and you're an instant messenger and you're sliding into the DMs and stuff. Whatever is there, that basic instinct that we have, it is going to bounce up against our akam, our reasoning, and our nafs al right? That self-reproaching soul. That part of our soul that says, hey, you can't slide into the sister's DM just like that. That's problematic. And that thing you're saying, it's not what you should be saying. And that thing you're watching at isn't the thing that you should be watching. And that thing you're sharing isn't the thing that you should be sharing. But that drive is going to be there because that's how Allah created us. Nafs al Amara, right? That's how He created us. He created us with that, with that desire to draw us to the base things of our nature. So the part of this verse here says that these two things are bound to meet each other. And in the era of social media, brothers and sisters, these things come together in a more pressing way. It's right there. Because we have access to things that initially we would have had to go find. We would have had to go look for it. In these cases, we don't have to go look for it. It's right there. It's actually coming right into our pockets. Yeah? We don't have to go look for it. It's coming to us. So the trick is, or the, the real thing we have to do, is to give ourselves more tools and more ways to make choices as it's coming towards us. How do we bob and weave? How do we duck it? Because it's coming. We are not going to avoid it. So how do we manage it effectively? So one thing I want to say, brothers and sisters, is that we have to find more ways to awaken this self-reproaching soul. Get more knowledge about it. 
and not just awaken it, but listen to it as we move forward. So there was one article I was reading which spoke about, so a lot of our kids play a lot of video games and stuff like that, right? And this one article was speaking about how some of us as parents, one of the things that we do is we complain all the time about how much you're playing the games, how much you're talking with people, how much you're doing things, right? We complain, we, we, we in the back and we're just, ah, 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 we're just doing that all the time. And trust me, after a while, that's all they hear. Ah, that's all they hear. They don't even hear words anymore. As soon as we open our mouths, what they hear, ah, that's it. So we're not really getting anywhere. So what this article was speaking about was, instead of doing the rah, rah, rah thing, instead of doing that and getting ignored, why don't we learn the technology if we can? Why don't we really learn it to see what it is? Why don't we speak to them on it? Why don't we share YouTube videos with them? Why don't we sit with them and create a YouTube video if that's what they do? So if we know that our kids are creating YouTube videos, how many of us have sat with them and watched them create it and even offer to be in it? They may not want us to be in it, but even off just the offering is okay. And even offer to be in one of them. How many of us actually communicate with our kids through social media so that we show them how to do it? Because if we are showing them, they're going to learn it from somewhere else. Because if we are the ones who are just out here saying no, 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 but everywhere else they go, right, because I'm in education, we are using it in education. The challenge of educators is to figure out how to integrate social media into the classroom space. So imagine how out of touch we are as parents when we are in the back there saying no, we can't use it. And where we have our kids learning, eight hours a day, seven hours a day, they're trying to figure out how to integrate it more. So they're telling them how to integrate it more, and we're in the back here saying, no, 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 get off, get off, get off. What are we doing? We are out of touch. We're not helping. So let's change the narrative a bit. So when I say that social media can be seen as an extension of our faith, and this is for those of us who use it, the Prophet of Islam, you have said, the one who guides so good is rewarded like the doer. In another iteration, the Prophet Muhammad is reported as Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved of people are to those, the most beloved of people to Allah are those who are most beneficial to others. So there's a lot of good in various spaces in social media. So my comments are for those of us who use it and some advice on how to engage it appropriately. I'll start with the first one. If I was asked a question here, how many of us have gotten something on whatever social media we, we use that says something like, forward this and Allah will bless you with fill in the blank. And us, being Muslims, who want to be blessed by Allah with whatever it is that we were promised, just click forward on it. Not knowing even if the thing that we forward is accurate or not. But because we have this promise of some nebulous blessing that someone most likely made up, we click forward and we send it to everyone in our list. That's a problem. Because one, if we are not checking the, the truthfulness of things that we are sending off, then we might be guilty of spreading misinformation. And if we are Muslims are spreading misinformation, if we as Muslims are spreading misinformation, then we are not being just. We are not engaging in justice. So one of the first etiquettes I want to share with us about spreading and sharing things, ascertain the veracity or the truthfulness in it. Don't just forward things blindly. Don't just repeat things blindly if we have not checked it out ourselves. Because if we are too lazy to do the research to check it out, 
then we shouldn't be too lazy to forward it. If we are too lazy to check out to see how truthful it is, then let's be too lazy to forward it. It is better for us. Not too long ago, I'll give you a clear example of this. Remember the somewhere in Central, I was about to say Central USA, but everywhere, everywhere right now is messed up. So, remember there was this guy, this pastor who was burning Qurans. I can't remember his name right now. It's just coming to my mind, right? This pastor who was burning Qurans somewhere in... I can't remember the name of the church. Right? You guys may know what I'm talking about, but he was burning Qurans and stuff like that. And you can call any place right now. It might fit the bill. Um, but there came a point in time when there was this new story that started circulating that he was arrested for molesting kids. And because we, as beautiful Muslims, believe in Allah's justice, what do we do? Yes, that's Allah's judgment right there. That is Allah's, that is how Allah deals with the kufar. That's how Allah deals with the kafir. Share. So we saw it, we click share, and then we put our own tafsir on it. <clears throat> this is how Allah, the reason for this, the asbab behind this, is this. And then guess what? After hundreds, thousands of us shared it, what do you think we found out? It was false. It was fake. If we think that a ghiba, backbiting, and the mima, slander, is only against Muslims, we are gravely mistaken. We are gravely mistaken. So think of how many of us, because we feel a sense of misdirected pride and our ego gets triggered that we feel that as Muslims we are now being vindicated by Allah because yes Allah promised that he's going to protect but because we feel like we have been vindicated that we now can do or say anything about anyone and then because of that we start just engaging in behavior that is problematic we don't think that we have an, that we have to answer for that and my question to us is, when we spread something that is false, do we make tauba for that? If we spread something that we later found out to be false, do we then turn around and make tauba for that? Or do we say, ah, tough luck? Because that is just as bad. That is backbiting. That is slander. And that is problematic no matter how we slice it. So, advice on this as part of the etiquette, if you're forwarding something, check it out. And if you don't have the time to check it out, don't forward it. Because I can guarantee you, you not forwarding it is not going to make someone not become Muslim. <laughs> You not forwarding that one post is not going to make someone become Muslim or not become Muslim. We don't have that level of power. That's only us thinking more of ourselves than we are. That's us needing to get out of our own heads. If there's another reason for doing it, then by all means, alhamdulillah. But know why you're making the choice. Another etiquette. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which said, it is sufficient evil for a Muslim to belittle his fellow brother. Meaning that it is sufficiently evil if we talk down or we belittle our brothers and sisters. That's evil. So the etiquette is uplift each other and do not belittle each other. 
I've left, I do not belittle. So how do we belittle each other via social media? If you're like me, and you're on social media, you may often see discussions or arguments, discussion, let be nice. You may often see discussions among the learned in our community, locally, Philadelphia, nationally, the United States, and even internationally. You may see a lot of these conversations. And then you may see some of these conversations deteriorate into things that you wonder, what just happened? How did this statement turn into you questioning the intellectual ability of your brother or sister on Facebook or on Twitter? How did that happen? It's the same reason it happens in real life. Ego and pride, the same exact reason. So how do we do that? We let our egos get riled up, and then we decide to say that, no, I am the one who knows what I'm talking about. You just came onto the game here. You don't belong in this space. What are you talking about? This is my domain. And we start carving out our domains on social media as though we are marking territory. Like I am the one who is supposed to be speaking about this. How dare you question me on my page? We need to check ourselves. So brothers and sisters, if something is in my area and I have decided to speak on it, Alhamdulillah, speak on it. But if someone else who has more experience and who has a closer connection to that area, that community, says something on it, I have two choices. I can show them how I, who is removed, who am removed from that area, is more intelligent than they are, and try to show them how they are wrong, or I can say, you know what, mashallah, that's just a different point of view, alhamdulillah, and leave it alone. What makes us choose to go the route of belittling the other person, as opposed to being willing to be the one who is wrong in this case here? I may have misunderstood it. Let me just shut up. These happen in big conversations, and even in conversations among our contemporaries, right? Among those who are just friends. It is simple, brothers and sisters. If we think we have more knowledge, then we should still shut up. If we think we have less knowledge, then we should still be quiet. Because if we had more knowledge, there is nothing that we are going to do in those paragraphs that we're going to type that is necessarily going to convince them that they were wrong. And the thing is that we, we, we try to make it sound like we have put real thought into this, right? We come on and we say something like, you know what? I wasn't going to say anything. I spent a couple of days thinking about what I was going to say, and then I decided that I'm still going to say something. I want to say that again because I need us to understand how we rationalize our ignorance. I took a couple days and I thought about what I was going to say. I wasn't going to say anything, but I couldn't let this sit. So I'm going to come and say something now. If after two days you still decide to come and insult the other person, then you wasted two days of your life. Your thinking mechanics needs a shift. It needs a shift. Because if that's what we came up after days of thinking about it, 
then something else is wrong, and it is not social media. If before we respond, we say something like, they do not know that I studied this, or we say to ourselves, yeah, I know more about this than they do, or yeah, I am the better person to address this, if any of the rationalization that we are using to respond starts with that in our minds, then that is a clear indication that we need to not say anything. Because in that moment, it is about us. It has nothing to do with serving our Lord. If the reason why I'm doing it is about me, then this is not about my Lord. And the only thing that can come out of that is something counterproductive. So the first edit, figure out why we're doing it. Question ourselves. And if we're not sure, as I said in the previous khutbah, no harm or foul if you say nothing. If we are quiet on a topic that is of the Muhammad, of the life of years, Nobody is going to jump up, Allah, Allah knows best, and say, you know what, I give up Islam because my sheikh here or my brother here didn't say something about this topic. We're not that important. Really, we're not that important in the equation. And if we think we are, then that is a problem. Be gentle, polite, and forbearing. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have said, the strong is not the one who can wrestle, who can all wrestle each other, but the one who controls anger. We've heard this many, many times. How the, what's the context of this here? Take it. Take it. Somebody says something that you don't like, take it. What do you have to lose by taking it? Just a slap to your ego. <laughs> take it. They remind you that, listen, I have been doing this for 30 years. Well, I've been doing it for 30 No, take it. So what if you've been doing it for 30 years, I've been doing it for 40 years? So what? The knowledge is with Allah. So what? Forbear. Take it. If you are right, then Alhamdulillah. If you are wrong, then Alhamdulillah that you didn't say anything to make yourself look even more ignorant. Because trust me, some of us go out there and we say things and we sound really ignorant and it's the mercy of Allah that everyone who is seeing us as being very ignorant doesn't come out and say something. For real. For real. Either way, bearing it, tolerating it, is not haram. It's not prohibited. But not bearing it and not tolerating it can lead to us engaging in behavior that is haram and prohibited. If we bear it, no harm, no foul. If we don't bear it, we run the risk of going into an area that we then become liable for. And that is a fact. And trust me, brothers and sisters, it's a lot easier to get to that point on social media. So if we think we are patient, when we are face to face, we need to dial it up even more when we're on social media. Even more so. The Muslim is the one who the Prophet Muhammad which what you have said, the Muslim is the one from whom others are safe from his hand and his tongue. You know, when we think of this, we really think of this as somebody putting their hands on us, right? In the physical space. Or somebody saying something about us in the physical world. 
we, we harm each other so much via social media. It's a shame. We really do a big injustice to each other. Eh? So in this space of social media, what we have to ask ourselves is, am I being just to the honor of my brother or sister? Am I being just? And if we don't have a definitive yes, stop. We're not looking for the gray area. Those of us who love to live in the gray area, we're not living right. Something wrong. It's a nice color to wear, but not a nice area to live in. Stop. <coughs> All right? So if we ask a question and we're unsure, don't do it. Plain and simple. We don't lose anything. The last, one of the other things I want to say here is, in terms of how we portray ourselves on social media, one of the etiquette is, in general, we don't boast about our sins. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reported to have said, all of my nation will be forgiven except for the ones who sin publicly. Indeed from this is a man who sins at night and he awakes with Allah's veil over that sin. And then he goes and tells someone about what he did. So he slept, this is a continuation of the hadith, right? He slept with Allah's veil protecting him and then he woke up and said, hey Allah, I know better. I'm going to remove that veil and tell everyone. This is what the hadith is telling us. That Allah decided in his wisdom to protect us and we decided, you know what? No. I know better. I'm going to tell. I'm going to share it. I'm going to boast about it. I'm going to publicly show it. But that there is not the issue with social media, right? That's the issue with us that we've lost higher, we've lost any sort of shame. And we've gotten to the point where we don't care that we are disobeying our Lord. <coughs> we are just comfortable in that space. And that's a scary space to be in. Brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about us who we do something wrong. And let's be real, right? Because the reason why it's attractive, and we have a, n a number of narrations to speak to that, right? We do something wrong and we feel good in the moment. That's, why it's, that's, that's what it is. That's, that's, that's how it comes to us. We do something wrong and we feel good in the moment. I'm not speaking to those of us who feel good in the moment, but right after we realize that we're feeling good about it, we start feeling guilty about it, and we turn to our Lord. That's not the ones I'm speaking to. The ones I'm speaking to are those of us who we do it, we feel good about it, and we continue to feel good about it. Without any shame whatsoever. That is the problem. We wouldn't be doing it if we didn't feel good about it in the moment. If it didn't make us feel a certain level of happiness in the moment. That's what sin is like at times. That's why we think of the hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salam. When Allah created the heaven and the earth, when Allah created the heaven and hell. And he surrounded the hell with all of the things that look good. And he sent Jibreel, and I'm paraphrasing, and he sent Angel Jibreel to look at it. And Angel Jibreel came back to Allah and said, I don't know if any of your creation will be able to escape it. Because it looks so good. And then he sent him to the heavens. And he went and he looked at it, and he came back to her and he's like, I don't know if they'll make it. Because it looks so tough to get there. Sin feels good and looks good, let's be honest. When you shout or when you demean someone or when you do something that makes you feel good, it feels good in the moment. As Muslims, our challenge is to realize that and to fight against it and to turn back to our Lord. This is why we have Tawbah. 
I'll end with one narration of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's in the, uh, a continuation of Samura. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I saw in my dream last night that two men came to me, took me by my hand and transported me to the blessed land. There I saw a man sitting and another standing with a metal hook in his hand. The standing man placed the hook inside of the sitting man's mouth into his inner cheek and he pulled with such force that he tore it to the, till it got to the back of his head. He then did the same with the other cheek by which time the first cheek had healed. So put the hook, tore it, got to the back of his head, then put it on the other side. This is not really happening, this is a dream, right? Let's put it in context, the dream. By the time you rip the second side of the cheek, the first one had healed. He then turned to the first one, back to the first cheek, and did the same again. The angel said, as for the man whose cheeks were torn, it was the one who spread a lie until it reached the ends of the world. So this is his punishment until the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to end where I started. When we're engaging in what we are sharing and communicating on social media, we have to be very careful with it. Because if this is an untruth, a lie, a false, or whatever you want to call it that we are spreading, this is when it really gets to the end of the world. This is when it gets to the four corners, quote unquote, of the globe. We don't want to be that person who the Prophet Sallallahu foresaw in his dream. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being among those who are the ones who are spreaders of falsehood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being among those who are the spreaders of fitna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being among those who are the oppressors of others, whether it be to their faces or behind their backs. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the end, our Islam is all about choices, and that is really the basis of it. It is based and judged on the choices that we make. We have no other power than the power to choose. And you've heard me say this before. We have no power than the power to choose. Even when we make a choice, us acting on that choice is still in the hands of Allah SWT. Even when we choose something, us actually doing it is by the power of Allah. The only thing we can do is make the choice. So let us pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to make good choices whenever we have to make choices. Amen. This is where our focus, our teaching, our learning, our development, and everything that we do needs to be. It is all supposed to get towards helping us make better choices. May we strive to purify the core of what we do and what we try. Per chance, we receive the mercy of Allah. Remember, we receive more good than we deserve and, not, and we are not given the amount of punishment that we deserve. Let us ask Allah to soften our hearts in grace and gratitude and to forgive us our sins. Akulu kawli hata wa sakulali wa lakum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Al-Alamin, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Now, brothers and sisters, social media is just a communication tool. The good of it is determined by the good of, by the good in us, and the bad of it is determined by the bad of us, or the bad in us. And it's up to us to make the right choices to move in the direction that we actually want to move. So what is our action plan? It's all about finding balance. Find your weak spots and the things that distract you on social media. List them, name them. That thing that distracts you and pulls you in, excuse me, list it, name it, and then come up with a plan as to how you're going to avoid it. Right? Only you can come up with that plan. Some of us can help you, coach you along, but only you can come up with a plan. Make do for those who are struggling. If you know a brother or sister who is struggling with engaging in behaviors on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, that is problematic, that we know is problematic, the best thing we can do for them is make dua. The best thing we can do for them is make dua. If the thing that we're doing is we screenshot it, and we send it, you see what Fulana is doing? You see what Fulana is doing? We screenshot and we send it, 
and we're just sending it around, then we're not helping them at all. But in that moment, we're telling ourselves, yeah, we are good Muslims. We aren't. We are the worst of them in that moment. Because we're actually eating of their flesh in that moment. If you take a screenshot of it and you send it to the imam or you send it to a parent or you send it to a friend who has a close relationship with them to talk to them, that's something different. Like, hey, do you know how we might be able to address this? But if you're looking for some real assistance, that's something different. But if you're sending it to people who have no power, no ability, no influence to help them, then you're just engaging in khiba and you're just engaging in problematic behavior and you need to stop. We have to protect ourselves. <clears throat> Continue to stab our ego. Hassan wa kinata bana. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fi al-akhirati hasan wa kinata bana. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fi al-akhirati hasan wa kinata bana. Last thing I want to say, brothers and sisters, we say this from the member each time. Do something for yourself, for your soul. Do something where you don't see the immediate benefit from it. Do something for someone else in a way that you're not seeing where it's going to come back to you. But know that because Allah is al haq that is going to come back to you. Do something for yourself and for your soul as often as we can. Because we know that charity is due on us every single day in some way, shape, or form. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eases the suffering of all of those who are suffering all around the world. Amen. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to help those who are suffering anywhere they find themselves in the world. Amen. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the ability of those who oppress from their oppression. Amen. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the ability of those who are oppressed from the oppression of others. Amen. We pray that, Allah, that we see racism and white privilege challenged more in the space that we see it. Amen. We pray that we challenge the demons in ourselves and that Allah SWT gives us the strength to fight against the, the base and lowest desires that we have within ourselves. Amen. May Allah restore the balance back to our lives and restore the balance back to those who are afflicted with calamity. Amen. Allah SWT in the Quran al karim Inna Allah wa malaikatu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim innaka hamdun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamdun majid Subhana rabbika rabbil aizati ala yasifun wa sallamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqtayyum salatu